All right, and similar to that ref in St. Louis last night, you're not going to like what I have to say, but you're going to hear it, and away we go. News in the NFL today that I think takes away any excuses for the Lions not to be aggressive and not to go all out. And understand the backdrop of this was inexplicably, in, in a very bizarre manner, a team that didn't even get to the Super Bowl, much less win it, having a receipts party. For people like Dave Burkett, I, I, Dave is infinitely fair and one of the best beat writers in the league. The point is, there's an air of smartest guy in the room going around. And while Brad Holmes has been very good drafting, the free agency has not been that good. It just hasn't. How'd that rebuilt secondary work? It didn't. So here's the point. We think it's been foreshadowed by Brad Holmes. Oh, no, no, we know best. We're not going to go out and have some bold offseason. We're not going to go out and be big in free agency. You, you pores, just sit there. We've got this all covered. Well, I think that's kind of novel from a group that didn't hang a banner last year, that didn't win anything. Yes, winning the division was important to us. Winning a playoff game was important to us. That Those are not things that the league does cartwheels over, Okay. Like the Pittsburgh Steelers make the playoffs every year. The owner said, quote, I'm sick of this. The Cowboys won 12 games three straight years. Won the division. Jerry Jones about to burn the building down. So Rico and I have said, you're in your Super Bowl window. And it is just clear as the day is long. There are a multitude of edge rushers that are going to be free agents. And there are a multitude of high-end corners. You need one or both. And I'm basically public enemy number one because I don't do the lemming routine. Rico doesn't do the lemming routine. I can both tell you I think Brad Holmes has done a very nice job, but Brad Holmes is not some kind of messiah. You know, I'm sorry, but Brad Holmes is not going to be uh, mistaken for Eddie DeBartolo Jr. anytime soon with four rings. Take it easy. <laughs> you know, you're a long way from Belichick. So I am going to question things. I am going to give you my opinion. That's what sports are for, and it's what I'm paid to do. Well, news in the NFL today, Ricardo. I think it takes away any excuses the Lions would have to be anything other than bold. The This is a Dave Burkett headline, so maybe Brad can keep a receipt here. Detroit Lions swimming in cap, spa cap space after the NFL sets the salary cap mm. at $255.4 million. And you go, well, that number doesn't mean anything to me. What is it at now? Glad you asked. The cap this year was 224.8. So to keep this nice and clean, we're just going to say the cap went up 30 million bucks. Now, what does that mean to you? Glad you asked. Mm -hmm. This is where Dave's a pro. The Lions have 171 million in commitments for 24. That number will increase once Amon Ra St. Brown and Aleem McNeil are factored in. They have 23 in dead money. You break it down, the Lions are going to open with roughly, before restructuring, before cutting anyone else, they are going to open up with $65 million in cap space. That puts them number eight in the league. Right. Number eight, not 18, not 28, number eight. $65 million in cap space. What it ends up being is this increase today just dropped a $15, $16 million bomb on you. Money that wasn't there, that's there now. This is before you redo people's deals. This is before you cut other people like Tracy Walker. So here's my question. How can you offer this franchise and Brad Holmes any wiggle room when it comes to the type of offseason they need to have. You didn't beat San Francisco because your defense is trash. Now they try hard and Aaron Glenn is the equivalent of a chef, a five-star chef cooking with two-star ingredients. He's doing the best he can. Yep. Whether it's a Daniil Hunter, whether it's a Chris Jones, whether it's a, a Legereus Sneed, whether it's a, a Kendall Fuller, I guys, I don't get lost in names. I, I want the data. I want the performance. I want the player. I, I have said this to you 
I cannot sit here this offseason and do what many of you are doing. Well, whatever Brad Holmes thinks is best, I guess we'll just go with that. Go somewhere else. I want to win a Super Bowl. You're not a Brad bot. No, I'm not a bot for any sports franchise. Listen, think about this. Let's take what we're talking about with the Lions and let's let's move it to another sport and a team I like. A team that has made the Super Bowl. A team that has had a decade of success. A team that had it all. The Boston Celtics still have not won the Larry O'Brien trophy. Brad Stevens, Danny, I was ready to run Danny Ainge out of town. Danny Ainge brought me a title. Danny Ainge engineered a rebuild that produced Eastern Conference Finals appearances and then a finals appearance two years ago that now Brad Stevens is in charge of. Uh, every year I am wholly unsatisfied without a championship and I want more. These, are, these are all facts, people. What he, did the Celtics do this offseason? It wasn't good enough to just pay Jalen Brown run it back with Tatum and Brown, and whatever they want is good enough for me. They went out and got Chris Stapps Porzingis. They went out and got Drew Holiday. They are loaded for bear. They went out at the deadline and got Xavier Tillman and all his children. So my point is, why would I ever be different with your team? This is a quest we're on. This is about having a parade down Woodward. It is. So just miss me. With any of this in Brad, I trust garbage. It's weak-minded. You don't think for yourself. And you're afraid is what that line of thinking really is. Because with $65 million in cap space, Rico, you and I both agree on this. The cap isn't even real. It's not. You have roughly a three- to five-year window. If right. you're lucky of being a Super Bowl team, it's go time. The problem is this. If you're Holmes, you got all that money. Are you going to be aggressive? I would like for him to go out there. I t I wanted him to go and get an edge. I mean, we all heard the Chase Young drop. We I remember the day when you promptly told me to to get out. Mm. You passed on people because you thought, okay, well, Houston's going to come back and he's going to be this guy. Except for he didn't come back until pretty much the end of the season, and he didn't have the impact that you thought he was going to. So now, you should go out here and you have the money for free agency. You make it fit. My biggest question that I think, Mike, they're going to take this extra money and they're going to reinvest in themselves. They're going to reinvest in the guys they already have on the team. Which and I encourage them to do, but they're not mutually exclusive. I, I understand that. Any GM with their, worth their salt could take this, accomplish what he needs to in-house, and go get the shopping done outside of the house. But Holmes has shown me that he appreciates and he cares about everybody in the locker room, and it's Detroit versus the world. I don't see him bringing in. He should. He's got the money. There's no excuse anymore. Cause, but I, I've i lowered the bar. I don't see it happening okay. because he won't there, do there, it. Okay, and, and for the record, Rico does something that I don't do. Lower the bar. I don't do it. Don't believe in it. They are capable. Rico, I just think about, in my mind, four of the top 100 picks coming up in this draft that's coming to town. If they go out and get a big-time corner, let's say, and then you back it up at 29 and you select a corner, do you know how different that secondary looks? Mm -hmm. Now Sutton can be the number two that he is, and I have an understudy for both of them that I can bring along slowly as a bit of a luxury. Your nickel corner. That's yeah. right. I, I just... I do now, not... now you can move Branch more to a safety role. Like There's so many different things that you can yes. do. So I'd like to hear from the people on this. Because for anyone who's crying about money, well, we got to pay this guy. We got to pay that guy. But well, see, that's just it. I think, I wonder if Holmes is kind of like the fans. Well, what about when Sewell's contract is going to come up and Aiden's is going to come I got up? Two and more, we got to pay golf. And I got two Ra. more years with Sewell. I got three more with Aiden. I'm on Rye and golf. We're going to have to pay them. We and the keep minute the you band pay golf, it'll be restructured. Or you pay I'm on Ra or you restructure someone else's deal. My only thing is if, if, you, if you're going to reinvest and you got this extra money and you're going to re-sign golf, do it now. Front load it. Take this extra money and kind of put it to, so when later down the line, when you need to get rid of him, he's not going to be a big cap. And here's the other thing. Here, you want to know where Sewell's money's coming from? When Taylor Decker walks out the door in a year. I mean, guys, uh, just 
This is the world we live in. I mean, it, it, yes, that makes sense, but I don't think people want to. That's why that. I wouldn't be mad if they drafted an O lineman at 29. Want to start having those conversations? I'm go with that referee. You're not going to want to hear this, but <laughs> that's the whole key. Rico, this is not like radio blather of you or I attaching ourselves to some inherent bias of one player they must have or it's a failure. No, that's petulant. I'm not doing that. I'm saying any of the elite edges or any of the elite corners is priority one, two, and three in free agency, which begins in roughly two weeks. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even limit it to edge. I would go de- defensive line. If you upgrade your D tackles, be able to rotate them in. Add strength to your strength. That's fine. Sure. If you went out and got a difference maker. Yeah. Like, let's say a week from today, you get news that someone told Chris Jones to F off and he said, I'll never be a chief again. There you I'd go. line up to hand him 30 million bucks. Yep. Chris Jones next to Aleem McNeil. Yeah, okay. You enjoy. You stay up late game planning for that. I'm going to sleep now. Like, guys, I just want to understand. With the news today, and and, and for context, Cap only went up $15 million last year. It went up 31 this year. You have been handed a player. Li- literally a $15 million a expenditure. You could get the you could go out and get Legarius Sneed with that money mm-hmm. if Sneed doesn't return to the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Guys, tell me what outs they have not to deliver a bold offseason that puts them squarely in the Super Bowl conversation. There's- this news today is huge. <laughs> because you, with the thirty-one million in increase, you can go out, and I'm talking like Cam Sutton and and you know, C.J. Gardner Johnson. No, you can get an impact player yeah, with you know that what? money. Here's you don't have to shop at the uh, discount DVD bin. No. You can go out there and you can get the main thing. And I have always said it: when bad teams go crazy in free agency, bad things happen. Right? It's it play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Free agency is generally for the elite. Free agency or where people like Rico from that privileged Pope mobile stop to hand a poor person a dollar and they just go, (laughs) oh, look, I've acquired Christian McCaffrey. Like, this is how you become. They had to give up things. Yeah. And it's just, guys, I I can't sit here. If you can afford to dine at the best restaurant on the planet, then why the hell are you eating at a a roadside garbage can? And I would, no, no, I would take it the next step. If you could afford to dine at the best restaurant, then don't check the bill when it comes to the table. Just pay it the cost. And right now you're you're itemizing yep. and you're trying to say, well, I only had the hors d'oeuvres and you had the drinks. No, no, no. You're one of the big boys now. Just throw the credit card down there, pay the cost, tip the waiter, and walk out. And here's the other angle to it. And I, I know you're not going to like this part, but whatever. I like that, bro. You're not going to like this. <laughs> But this is this is where <laughs> trades take place, too. This oh. is where you don't need all that draft capital. This is where if somebody decides they're going to do a sign and trade, if somebody decides, hey, I want to go out and I want to trade for a, a big-time player, that's a thing in the NFL now. It's what propelled Philly to a Super Bowl two years ago, getting A.J. Brown. You're number one, too, Kenny. 248 539 We will get your phone calls next, 97 one. 